Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be talking to an old uh, friend of mine from the Bay Area comedy scene. Her name is Jane Hayes. She is a really cool chick from Memphis, Tennessee. She's hella cool, really funny, and uh, she was one of the few nice ones um, that was nice to me in the, in the early years of stand-up comedy for me in the Bay Area. I haven't seen her in over 10 years, and I can't wait to be talking to her uh, pretty soon. And uh, it's going to be really cool. we got a lot of catching up to do and talk about the old days and stuff like that. And I can't wait. So, yeah, here is my interview with Jane Hayes. Hi, Jane. Hello, Tommy. What's going on? Not much. How you doing? Doing good. So, are you already on the podcast going on? Sure am. Okay. Welcome to the show. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, uh, what's today's theme? Just the brainwash? Oh, yeah, that and just, uh, you know, beginnings and stuff like that. So... We've known each other a long time now. We met at the Brainwash Cafe around, what, 2007, something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I, you were one of the few uh, comics there that were genuinely nice to me, I remember. <laughs> well, because I'm not an asshole for the most part, so there, there you are. Um, because, you know, people starting out typically are assholes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know, um... Yeah, and I think it's because of, you know, you know, I'm not from San Francisco, so, you know, I, I didn't understand why people were mean. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm, I know I'm not cool, guys. <laughs> Let's just play. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. Did you, uh, so did you start uh, doing comedy that year? No, I started in uh, 2005. I think I started two weeks after Mitch Hedberg died. And wow. I mean, that was like a, a catalyst to get on stage in Seattle um, up at a place called Giggles, which is no more. Um, uh, rest in hell, that place. <laughs> um, that, that, that guy, uh, I will talk about him till the day I die, the guy who ran that place. Um, and then I, uh, he kicked me out for a MySpace page that I've been dedicated to him. He didn't like that. At least you didn't know who it was. And then, uh... Wow. Then I moved over to the Comedy Underground in Seattle, which was a great, great little spot. And then, you know, went down to San Francisco, uh, hung out for a week, and then a month later I moved down there. Because um, I thought it'd be as easy to kind of, like, get established there as it was in Seattle. And yeah. I was wrong, but... <laughs> you learn. So... Uh, but hanging out at the brainwash, you know, at the beginning it was just, I guess, what, was it Thursday nights? Yeah, Thursday. And then uh, Corey, or not Corey, but Christy Ono ended up coming around, and then we had that ladies' night. Yep. So that was two nights out of the week living at the brainwash. Yeah. And then for, forcing our jokes down the throats of people who did not want to listen and just wanted their clothes to be done. And, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Audience, where you can. Oh, my God. Yeah. Before we get, we, before we get into uh, the brainwash more, though, I was wondering, um, so did you watch Stand Up as a Kid? Mm-hmm. So we watched uh, some stuff, and you know, there's there like lounge lizards was on, and like I remember distinctly seeing like Mary Allen Hooper do something, and who is almost, I mean, I don't even know where she is anymore. But last time I checked, I think she's like down in LA or something, like just some random person. Uh-huh. And then when I was 14, I really got into who's on is it anyway. Uh, became a huge fan of Greg Fruits. Yeah. And uh, and watching his stuff trying to track him down, like, you know, what he had been a part of, like, I got introduced to, uh, they had a show called Late Friday, that would come on, 
and then they had a whole bunch of you know San Francisco guys like Greg Barron was on it and uh, actually even the College Sense Presents at that time was uh, really solid I mean you had like Tom Rhodes' special was on at that point um, and Hedberg's and and then you know I, I realized that like San Francisco comedy was really the best yeah I mean, uh, you know, it's smart and it's kind of silly, and uh, and then that was part of what attracted me to just the Bay Area. It's like, wait, I get to go play at these places that you know my comedy heroes, you know, yeah, <laughs> play that. Uh, but yeah, it took me from fourteen till uh, about twenty, you know, just being a fan before I actually got on stage. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, afraid of. Because I wasn't 21 yet. Uh-huh. You know, most establishments are 21 and up. Yeah. So, so it's like, I can't go into a bar. I don't have a fake ID. You said, you know, I felt 90. I had carded and I'm 33 now. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was, I was always afraid of that. But, you know, I finally did it. Uh, first time was okay. Second time was absolutely terrible. Um,. <laughs> Third time was okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the first time I played at Giggles, the mic went out. You know, like it was a great crowd. After about 25 comics, it, it got down to four people left, and they were just there because they were being polite. Yeah. Uh, and the guy right before me broke the mic, so I had to project. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, a, it was a terrible, terrible start there, but. Uh, you know, the first year I ended up doing like a hundred shows. That was my goal. Like, I think I did like a hundred and six, like open mics and just going up. Yeah. Uh, as much as I could. And, you know, that really didn't stop for about four, uh, like four or five years. I mean, so, uh, and then, uh, you know, it, the, the mics down in, uh, in the bay, you no, know, I was pretty much in the city the entire time. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I didn't have a car and I was always broke. <laughs> <laughs> so we had like that Tuesday night show, which was across the, the street from the Rainwash. Yep. <laughs> and that was like where comics lamented to go. It was just like, yep, here again. Do we have any audience? Nope. <laughs> yeah, what was that place called? I, I know which one you're talking about. <sighs> Something Supper Club? Yeah, su- yeah, Supper Club. I don't know if it was the first night, but, he, you know, he just did 45 minutes in, in this awkward space and, and made it come alive. It was weird. Um, and I think that was probably the best set that I had ever seen like, mm-hmm. in that room. And then I, you know, got introduced to, like, who Will Franken was. He's a crazy genius. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Shit. He's really spectacular. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, I got down to the bay and then, you know, worked at Cobbs. Or, like, the first day I got down there, I went to the punchline and I was uh, going to see a show. And then I asked uh, the manager at the time, Mark, I was like, hey, uh, are y'all hiring? And he was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I knew something would happen today. And he was like, oh, yes, we are. It's just, you know, Left this form and blah blah. You know, we need a food runner, so I was working there. Oh, nice. Already had a, already had a job lined up at Cobb's. Uh, my friend Bridget was the box office manager, and uh, mm-hmm. so I had two jobs immediately. Unfortunately, you know, if you're working in, in stand up, you can never get time off when you're doing shows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, had a chance to meet whole bunch of different people got exposed to a whole bunch of wonderful comics of course um, and uh, you know then you know now I live in Memphis again and uh, you know for the first year I do go, well I, you know I met that person blah 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 and then uh, a great comic from uh, uh, who's now in Chicago Mary Jordan turned to me and said Jane can you just stop name dropping like I'm not name dropping this was my life for you know a good year 
Yeah. Which, yeah, they actually just they just started doing an open mic night um, like once a month at Cobb's. Really? Yeah, it's 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 like it's like L.A. It's a fucking lottery, you know. <laughs> They got no loyalty. <laughs> They're fucked up. Yeah. yeah, and the punchline, you know, wasn't much different when I went. You know, the, the biggest difference is that they have PBR in cans. Yeah. It's like $7. And I'm like, that's like a $2 beer at best. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not okay, you guys. All right. But. Yeah, fucking... Oh my God! So, what? You, what uh, so, it's okay. So you started in '05, but when did you move to San Francisco? I guess in, in '07. There, uh, it would have been. Uh, oh, I moved on 420. Actually, that's <laughs> good. Good day to move. So. Okay, because I okay. I April 20th, 2007. Okay, because I started in June of 2006. I moved. Uh, the week of Valentine's Day to Arizona um, fe- in, in 07, February of 07. I came back um, in, uh, July 4th of 07, and that's around the time that I met you. Um, mm-hmm. And I started going back uh, a lot and everything. Yeah, because what happened was the year before, in June of 06, it was, it was a weird year for me. I found out I had to lose weight because um, – I, I I weighed 350 pounds. I had the cholesterol of 208. I mean, I was just in bad shape. And so the very next week, my now um, ex-friend that you know, Daniel Allen, um, <laughs> called. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation, but. Yeah, he comes He comes to me and uh, says, hey, hey, I, I finally found a place where we can try stand-up comedy, a place up in the city called The Brainwash. You know, because we lived in San Mateo on the peninsula. And I said, are you fucking crazy? You want to go now? We, we, we don't have anything to, to talk about. And he's like, I'll buy us a, a notepad and we'll ride on the train. And that's what we did. And all I came up with that first, that first night was a rant about Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes and some jokes from a comedian I liked that uh, nobody remembers named Bob Zaney. That, that was that. That was my set for the night. Oh, that's funny. I was the last comedian of the night. It was me, Danny, Tony Sparks, and two black women there, and that was the the crowd for me. And they laughed at the Bob Zaney jokes. They kind of got uncomfortable by me when I went on that rant about Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes. But I had orgasmic bliss on stage, and I was like, I, I want to do this. I want to do stand up. And that's how it began. Yeah. Well, you get that those laughs, that first laugh, and then you're like, oh, I've got to do it again. And then, especially after you, you, you experience bombing and realize, <laughs> no, it is just you. It's not, it, no, those jokes are not good enough. Like, seriously, no, it, it is you. It's not the audience, it's you. Uh, then you're like, wait, i got to go back and make the laughs happen again. I can't I can't let that be the last one. And then, and then you're hooked, and then... <laughs> And then you're there every night, and then you're like, why am I so tired at work? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> probably because you spent two hours on a train to go tell jokes for five minutes, but you spent like 30 bucks in the process on food and whatever. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, and if, but you get to meet some good people along the way. Yeah, it, it, I'll tell you something. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of massive... Uh, um, amount of support or camaraderie there unless you were established you know but at least us beginners like because it, it was it was me me and Danny we were hanging around you know Julian Vance and David Wiswell and Sean Murphy 
and uh, Nathan Jackson and all those guys, and they were all cool with us. You know, we had like our little our little group there, and then you know the established guys they would come and go. You know, do their set and then go to another one. You know, mm-hmm. and shit. that shit uh, my brother did that to me today on the phone fuck I hate that shit <laughs> yeah like why don't you do it on stage and if I happen to like listen um, and it's funny I'll tell you um, if it's a good joke I'll tell you um, but don't run a joke by me <laughs> yeah just do it do it it's it, it's annoying <laughs> and if you stick around in, in the business long enough you'll see why it's annoying yeah. Fuck. The funniest part of it is the fact that you're trying. <laughs> and you still have hope. Uh, well, there was fucking... But, yeah, I, I was never one of those people. I mean, I, I didn't know shit about it, you know, but I was never one of those people who was like, hey, here's a joke you can use or something like that, or, hey, I can do that. How do I get it? I never was one of those people, but yet there were certain comedians at the Brainwash who treated me as if I was one of those people. And mm-hmm. one of them is really successful right now, Ali Wong. She was one of them. Of course. Yeah, I mean, Ali, and, that's, and it's funny to see her on Netflix, you know, and I've had, uh, like, coworkers and other people off going, yo, I, uh, Ali Wong's really funny. I'm like, uh, she's still doing the, the, the seal, seal joke, uh, the spiders, uh, that, that one? Okay, still doing that one. Yeah, uh, that's still the same stuff that she was working on 10 years ago, but now it's on record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good. It's good stuff, you know. Um, and, I, and I'm super happy, you know, anytime, you know, somebody gets popular. Because, you know, like, I see most of Casher stuff out, and, uh, you know, and, and more power to him. Like, and it, it was cool to have, like, that magical time of hanging out and even being with, these people who were almost peers, but not quite. Yeah. Um, you know. It, wait a second. Was wait a second. Is Mashi Cashier a Bay Area comic? Yeah. Wait. He was at the punchline while we, you know, for the most part. Was he ever at the brainwash? Or uh, hanging what? out at that point. Wait, was he ever at the brainwash? Um, I think I saw him there once or twice. I know I saw Brent over there at least at least once because I think he was working on something and, huh. I can't and I saw Alex Cole out there and yeah I think they were kind of a triad there for a little while um, but even then Mojo was uh, getting some pretty sweet gigs uh, he was doing a little more feature work at that point yeah um, and uh, you know like at, at Punchline which once you get to that point you're like oh I'm good I don't, I don't need brainwashing my life anymore okay now I see the connection of how uh, um, Kasim Bentley was writing for him uh, last year. Oh, yeah. 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 And, I, and I hear Kasim's doing well these days. He's kind of like old man's favorite comic or whatever. Yeah. Um, or is he, no, he's done it now. I don't know. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he's in the, uh, Kasim's in L.A. Yeah. He's going back and forth. I mean, he's he, he has been, he, I think he was, in the, he was in San Francisco last week. I know that. But um, he's going back and forth. Okay. He turns all his complaints about L.A. into humor on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I see that. He's very frustrated, and but he's turning it all into humor. Yeah. And that's all you can do. I mean, one of the things that I, I had to back off from comedy, so I ended up 
backing off a little bit because I was on the road for about five years, kind of being a road comic, made it on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, um, I had to back away because I was getting I was getting too jaded, and where you know, some of the same jokes I would tell, like there was just too much anger on my part, and it, it, yeah, I didn't even realize what it was, and just just not being happy where it was, and um, you know, back off with school, and then. You know, every time I go back and uh, do some time, it's just, it, it's fresher and it's sillier. And then it's like, I've kind of recaptured um, some of that magic that you have when you first start, except, you right. know, I don't have the hard lessons that I have to relearn, uh-huh. you know, which, <laughs> which is fantastic. Um, and, and, you know, I have, I have a better sense of what's funny and what's not. Um I also have a sense of what people will laugh at and what I will laugh at because they won't laugh at. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and bombing isn't, isn't the end all, you know, at this point. Because it's like, eh. Yeah. You know, I've, I've made people laugh for a living for, for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, I need the benefits, so... <laughs> Yeah. I mean, and to the level that you can live comfortably, and you know you're not hustling every single day, and because it really life is not. You know, in your twenties, it's great, but once you start in your thirties, you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> yeah. I want stuff. Yeah. Well, what year did you uh, leave the bay? Wow, was it that long ago? Wow. Yeah, I've been going a while. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've popped back in a few times, but um, not not nearly what I thought I would. And then, uh, I mean, quite quite honestly, the city has priced me out of uh, out of it for a lot of uh, opportunities. I mean, you know, even uh, so, a few years back, it's probably been hell. It's probably been like seven at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was hanging out with my friend Mo, and he was doing the San Francisco comedy competition. Mo Mandel? No, 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 my friend Mo Alexander. The other Mo. There's oh. Only, there's only like two. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he was coming out, you know, from, from Memphis and doing that, and I was like, I'm going out because I want an excuse to get to the Bay. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's just so funny how fast that area just changes over and over again, and it's like, I can't, no, these prices are ridiculous, guys, <laughs> so, and by the way, you get paid pretty much the same, no matter where you are, for, for you know, if future set, it's probably going to be the same amount of money, you know, you're headlining, you know, on a road kind of gig, it's, it's pretty much the same money, whether you're in a, a small town, or, you know, the bay. And so that's part of the reason why I uh, stayed uh, in the South, just because price of living is so much less. Yeah. Um, that comic money you can survive off of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, out there, you know, not so much. Well, I've interviewed yeah. a lot of stamp comedy legends on the show, and they told me that back in the 80s, all, all comedians during a show. The, the MC, the feature, the headliner, they all made the same amount of money. They made they made up to uh, like $400 in those days. Jesus Christ. Well, you know, like, uh, um, since I left, a uh, guy out in L.A. now, but it was in San Francisco, comic, uh, Kevin Kata Oka, uh, I've kind of connected with him because he's got friends in Memphis. And, you know, he was saying, you know, I, I was an MC. You know, I was a working MC and quit my job. Because <laughs> he'd go out to, like, Tommy T's and, you know, do the punchline and, and Cobbs and, you know, all these other places. And he made a living being an MC. You can't do that now. Really getting, yeah, no. If, if you're even getting paid as an MC, um, it's not going to be that much. I mean, that's, that's almost not a paid position anymore uh, for a lot of people. 
Yeah. Fuck. Oh my god. So I so I the last time I played the brainwash, it was on Thursday, January 29th, two thousand nine. Uh, I quit comedy for a year because I was working as a bouncer in a bar in San Mateo, where that they had a comedy night there. Um, when I when I came back from Arizona, I was uh, performing there uh, weekly on Thursday night or uh, Wednesday night on Wednesday night. And after the comedy night got canceled, I got offered a job, so I took it. And by January of '09, I was like enamored with that place. I was promoting all the events. I was getting laid a lot. It was fucking awesome. Good job. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and I just I, I got tired of just writing comedy all the time and just going up on stage and bombing a lot, especially at the Brainwash because all the crazy homeless people there were just not responsive and it was just the fucking dead crack house almost, you know? And so I just, so I gave up for a year, not even thinking I was ever going to go back to it. And then a year later I decided I'm going to go back to it because I was just bored. I had nothing else to do. I had lost the job in a, in a, in a, in a bad way and shit. And so I go back to it and I decide I'm not, I'm not going to go to the brainwash ever again because I just feel like I closed that chapter of my comedy career. So then I found out that the Silicon Valley comedy scene in San Jose, Mountain View, Sunnyvale, they were, that was opening up. And so I started going there. Um, uh, did you ever go to Rooster Tea Feathers? Uh, I did. Uh, wait, I've done it twice. Once, uh, Matt Kirchner came into town and was nice and late. Somehow he, he and I, and, uh, Howard Kramer and uh, 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 who's passed on uh, Holly Stevens, who, who used to do clown porn. Somehow we ended up <laughs> on uh, uh, on the top of a roof somewhere drinking after a show. Right. And then he was like, "Hey, I've got the show out in Rooster Teeth. Um, you know, you want to you want a guest spot? Um, I also got a guest spot at the Punchline because of this too, but because uh, it's nice. So we went out there." I did the thing, and it was okay. I don't know. Uh, I think Beth Schumann was still working. And they were like, oh, okay, that was nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then a few days later, so I got the guest spot through Howard Kramer for um, uh, the punch. And uh, Andy Kindler was headlining. It was him, uh, Kramer was featuring. I got on. Uh-huh. And... Yeah, you know, I just I bombed like my opening joke, you know, and done it, and I've done it, you know, several times since. And this lady damn near like clutched her pearls and like, oh, like it, it was. I was like, what? Like this is weird. Um, everybody was coming to see Andy Kindler because of um, like everybody loves Raymond, so it was that crowd. <laughs> yeah. Then, you know, and and I bombed so badly, and like I just left and went over to Cobb's and 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 hung up. Uh, hung out upstairs and just like kind of drink a beer or something and, and, and watch Sinbad like in in the shame of silence and, and, and darkness and uh, and then I found out later that Andy Kindler ended up walking 20 people that night uh, because they didn't get him so I don't think that it's necessary it, like that I'm not sure if it was completely new <laughs> but I didn't walk 20 people uh, <laughs> so uh, it, it was it was kind of that was a very interesting soul party night. Um, but uh, how did I get up on that? I don't I don't remember. Oh, Rooster Teeth, yes. And uh, the second time I um, went back over there uh, with my buddy Mo Alexander, um, uh-huh. and we had a night, and it was good. It's fine. You know, uh, I think mm-hmm. I would have had a lot of fun if I would have hung out there more than say elsewhere. Yeah. So, yeah, so I started performing there and it became my, uh, it, it became my, it was the only club that would put me on in the entire Bay Area because, you know, I'm pretty raunchy and I, I, and I don't fucking cut corners. I just go for it, you know? And so, uh, for the first four years, it was great there. You know, I'd go up once a month or whatever and I'd kill every time. It was great. Then, um, I had my car accident in January of 2015, and 
you know, I spent 30 days in a coma. I spent five months in the hospital, all that stuff, right? I start, then I decide, you know, I'm going to pursue comedy full time as a career. Because, you know, I, when I was starting from the brainwash all the way till 04, 05, I didn't have any friends or mentors in comedy. Nobody told me about the business side, you know? And all my peers fucking hated me. So, so I start hanging out at, at, at Rooster a lot, um, I, you know, to perform there and to hang out and watch other comedians and shit. And, oh, my God, the fucking staff gave me so much frostbite that it, after about a year, it made me very uncomfortable and I stopped performing there. And then uh, back in January of this year, I, I went into town to do uh, an audition for America's Got Talent. I've auditioned three times overall, and this was my third time. And I asked uh, Heather, the owner, if I could do a set, and she said, sure. So I go to do it, and in the eight years I've been performing there, I have never been late one time. And the one time I am, I get yelled at by the manager. Uh, she's, she's, she's been there probably about four years and shit, and she's always been a bitch to me since day one, but... I, I was so mad, I wrote Heather this long fucking email saying, you know, everyone there has been a bitch, bitch to me for the last three years, and it's got to stop. You know, I'm very loyal to that place, and yes, you haven't, you know, hired me to work there, but still, you know, I appreciate the stage time you give me and everything, and I don't deserve to be treated like that. And the worst part about it is, not only was she a bitch to me, she asked me, what's your name again? <laughs> yeah. And so I never got a reply back from Heather. So I was like, fuck it. I'm never performing there again. And it's a sad, oh. sad situation, but I'm never doing it again. Yep. And, uh, I mean, a lot of that stuff is you got to go find other spots. You know, and, then, and then, you know, networking is, is, is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, I, I think... Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you can edit this out, my part. Uh, <laughs> but, but, yeah, um, but unfortunately, I got to go. And, it, you know, it's been great talking and reminiscing and, and all that other stuff. And I almost feel like this needs a second part. Because I, I think we were, we were re reaching the meat of the problems here uh, of uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the comedy. I wanted to tell you just, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to, to tell you how, just how fucked up. Uh, the 